Hi, my name's Tom Schaefer. I'm pastor of Faith United Lutheran Church in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome to the third Sunday of Advent. This is Faith United Online. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. Your prophets spoke of a day when the desert would blossom and waters would break forth in the wilderness. Bless us as we light the candles of this wreath. Strengthen our hearts as we prepare for the coming of the Lord. May he give water to all who thirst for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. 
Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who got, go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Have you ever felt down? I mean, really down. This has actually been kind of a tough week for my wife Karen and I. Um, earlier this week, we lost our, our 17 year old schnauzer. She'd been with us for a long time, Missy. And that was tough, it was a tough thing to go through. But even as we went through that, I, I knew, I know, that there are those who are struggling with things that are far more difficult. You know, it's an irony that at this time of year, with all its merry music and well wishes, there are a lot of people who feel depressed. And there are no doubt a multitude of reasons for that. The darkness and gray skies of winter, you know, seasonal affective disorder, stresses of work, the, the stresses of not having work, the stresses of looking for work. And then of course there are the stresses of this year. Let's face it, in so many ways, 2020 has been a downer. With When this pandemic started back in March, never did we expect we would still be dealing with it at Christmas time. And so this year, more than any in memory, more of us are missing home, missing loved ones, feeling alone, starving from a lack of human contact, this time of abnormality and isolation has affected all of us. Today's text is a text for anyone who is going through a downtime, anyone who's going through some depression. It was written to a group of people who were feeling very, very down and defeated. They were in post-exilic Jerusalem, and this was a depressing place. When Judah was conquered by the Babylonians, they had destroyed uh, many of the cities, including Jerusalem. The walls of the city had been pulled down, the temple was ransacked, and when the people were in exile, those who were those who had been left behind had neither the supplies or the manpower to do much about it. The city was in ruins. The once great city was a place of squalor and rubble. On top of that, the people who were left behind resented those who now were returning after the Babylonians had, had been defeated by the, 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 by, by the um by the Persians. And so now they're returning and the people left behind resent these people that are returning and those returning judged those who were left behind because they had never rebuilt the city while they were gone. Jerusalem was a depressed, burned out ghetto. But God sends a prophet with a message of good news. And his name is Isaiah. We're going to pick up reading at Isaiah chapter 61, the first verse. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. God's prophets have not always delivered the cheeriest of messages. We've seen that. But this is 
unabashed, extravagant good news. God is going to mend broken hearts, free those who feel trapped, comfort those who mourn. The day of the Lord, a day feared by most, is revealed to actually be a day of God's favor. Things are going to get better, much better. Isaiah says, let me tell you how much better things are going to get. We pick up at the second part of verse, verse 3. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines, but you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations and in their riches you shall glory. All those who are depressed, Isaiah says, are going to stand tall. Those devastated cities, you're going to rebuild them. And guess what? It's going to be done with the help of other people, with the help of foreigners. God is going to put their manpower, their wealth at your disposal. The glory days are no longer behind you. They are in front of you. Now, that's amazing news, but where God takes it next the level to which God escalates this good news is breathtaking and important for all of us. Picking up at verse 7. Because their shame was double and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. To all the depressed, oppressed, burdened, brokenhearted, grieving, God makes an everlasting covenant. And this covenant is one that has impact on the whole of creation, creation, every people and every nation. Verse 9. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as the garden causes what is sown to, in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before the nations. The people of Israel are whom God will use to bring forth salvation and righteousness and praise among all people everywhere. Isaiah says, as the earth brings forth its shoots, so the Lord. You know, Jesus became known as the shoot of Jesse the one who sprung forth from the people of Israel to bring salvation to the world. Very early in the Christian t tradition, a white robe became a symbol of salvation. We, we can read about this in the book of Revelation. Listen to this. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, that would be Jesus, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. Then 
one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. When you put your faith in Christ, Christ puts on you the garment of salvation, the robe of righteousness. You too become part of the story, a part of the prophecy of Isaiah. And if you are depressed, there is good news. If you're brokenhearted, Christ will mend it. If you feel trapped, enslaved, God will free you. If you are mourning, the Holy Spirit will comfort you. This, right now, is the time of the Lord's favor, and He has made an everlasting covenant with you. For all of us that are going through anything during these difficult times, this is news for you. Receive the garment of salvation. Better days are ahead. Hear the good news of the day of the Lord's favor. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, I want to thank you all for joining us this week for the third Sunday of Advent. I hope maybe you had your Advent wreaths at home or your, or your Advent candles uh, that you uh, lit with us this week. If not, you can still do it next week when we will light all four candles of the Advent wreath. Um, you might be wondering why the one candle is pink this week. That is because uh, this week, with a text like this today especially, it is a special day of hope in the midst of our waiting for the coming of the Lord, in the midst of our waiting during this Christmas season. I know we all needed a message of hope right now. I hope it inspired you and lifted you up. And if you found it helpful, perhaps there's someone you could share it with. Would love for you to do that. In the meantime, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll know when more videos come from Faith United Online. God bless. 
keep safe. Have a great week.